All right, so we've been going over transformations, uh, reflections, translations, and uh, rotations on the coordinate grid. And uh, I just want to give a brief tutorial on using GeoGebra to illustrate these transformations and how easy uh, GeoGebra is and how effective it is in learning about these transformations on the coordinate plane. So I opened up GeoGebra and I just clicked on the uh, Geometry app link and this is what I come up with. Uh, so I'm just going to click on more, click on more again um, to make sure that I have um, all the buttons available to me. And when I scroll down um, you can see how I have these buttons here for transforming images. Um, so that's mainly what I'm going to be using here. I'm also going to right click and show my grid. I want both major and minor grid lines. Uh, I'll move this guy up here for now. Um, and I also want of course to show my Cartesian plane or coordinate grid. Both positive and negatives, of course. Um, so I'm going to start with just creating a uh, move my face over here now. I uh, just want to create any kind of polygon just to illustrate this. So I will click on the polygon button and I am going to just create a quadrilateral uh, this four sided shape. Uh, right there. For the purpose of illustrating reflections as well, I made sure it was not symmetrical. Uh, so uh, let's translate first. Um, oh, before I do that, actually, I do want to make sure, or if and when you'd like to do this, uh, you can easily um, put uh, and display your coordinates. So when you right click and you go to settings, uh, you have all these options here and I would like to not just show the name of the vertice but the name and value and it will appear. Okay, so you can easily do that to get your coordinates to appear. Negative uh, 5 and 3 is your A. Um, but I'm just going to let, uh, I'm just going to continue on with the transformations. Uh, so I want to translate first. So this button right here Translate by vector. I'm going to click on that and it gives you instructions down here as well. Select object to translate then vector. So I'm going to select my quadrilateral that I'm going to move and I will focus on vertice B and it actually shows you the vector angle or arrow um, as you click on the vertice. I'm going to move it or slide it or translate it uh, to this point here and it automatically translates your image for you. Then let's say, let's go to the next one, just do rotation. So rotation around a point. Now you could do a rotation uh, with one of these vertices if you want, so the shape will turn around these vertices, or you can turn it around the origin, but I'm going to create a floating point of rotation by selecting this button up here just to um, rotate a point. So I want to create a point. So let's put it right here. So there's my point of rotation and I'll go back down uh, to these buttons again and I'll click on rotate around point. So the instructions say select object to rotate center point and then angle. So here's the object I want to rotate. Here's where I want to rotate around and then you have this screen popping up. Now I'm just going to stick with the basic. Uh, I'm going to go with 90 degrees and uh, let's go clockwise. Okay, and there I go. So it's once again uh, very easy. And uh, as you can see, when I originally clicked on the A to show my coordinates, my new coordinates continue to show up. So GeoGebra does that for you, including the labels of each vertice. So you got your prime, you got your double prime, and so on. And it easily shows you the rotation. So there's rotations. The next one I want to do is a reflection. Now I want to, I'm going to move my face again, put you down here. Uh, so a reflection, 
you can reflect over x-axis, y-axis. You can put a, a line of reflection through your shape, outside the shape, diagonal, whatever you want. I am going to do a little bit more of a complex reflection, but I need to draw my line of reflection. So I'm going to click on the segment button. And let's uh, create a segment between this coordinate here and all the way up to this point. So my line of reflection is going to uh, intersect or go through this shape here, which will mean that my shape will overlap once it gets reflected. So uh, I go back down to my reflection button. Uh, I click on that and it says reflect about line. So in the instructions say select object to reflect, then line of reflection. So I'll select my shape and my line of reflection, and there you go. Diagonal and overlapping. And again, it pops up with the coordinates and the names of the vertices, which is what, what I'd want. I want all four vertices, but <clears throat> just for the sake of time, uh, we'll just keep the one uh, coordinate. So I'm going to actually do another translation um, just so that I can move the shape out from the, this, this mumbo-jumbo. So I'm just going to click on my translation tool or button. I'll click on my shape, uh, the vertice I'm going to focus on, and let's just move it over here. Okay. Now the one last thing I'm going to show, so I've already shown you now all three transformations. The last thing I'm going to show is the dilation tool. You can dilate from a certain point. Now dilation is when your uh, your, your your tool, your object, your shape is, is dilating by a certain amount. So you can dilate it twice the size that it currently is um, and you determine the, the size that you want. So for example, I'm going to click on the dilate button, it says select object, then center point, then enter the factor. The factor is the size of dilation. So I'm going to click on this object here and the point that I'm going to dilate from, let's dilate from M. So this point right here and let's make the size twice as much. So two, that'll be my, my factor. And I click on OK. And if you take a look at the segment between M and L here, it's only two units of the major grid lines. It doubles it. So now you got four. Up here, two. Now you got four. So I dilated the factor of being two. Um, now, another little quick little feature. Because everything is so jumbled up here, I can change the color to make things more clear. So if I right-click on a certain shape, Actually, let me uh, get out of this tool here. I'll just go to my arrow tool. <clears throat> and I actually just click on the shape with my left button. I get all these little buttons here. And this one here, you can quickly change the shape. So let's just make it red. And there you go. Uh, my next uh, one, I'll, I'll click on here. and uh, Let's make it uh, green. This one here, let's make it uh, I don't know, more of a black shape. Uh, this one, he, oh, this one might be a little bit difficult because I have now, it's sitting over top of that original shape. So I, I could change the color uh, before I did all this, which would have been better. But uh, let's just change this big one to, uh, let's click, click on the plus and create some different uh, shape. Let's go for pink. All right, so pink, there we go. And there's my pink shape. And there you have it. Um, so that's just a brief review of all the different transformations using GeoGebra. Pretty cool, eh? All right. I'm done.